Duh. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. On this Friday morning, I've got something super special for you guys, the Nurgle Play Hulk, and I'm dedicating this video to my good friend, Michael Carlin. This is for you, my man. So what we're going to be doing today is focusing on some of the clutches Nurgle colors, utilizing washes, dry brush technique, airbrush, we're going to be doing some gangster gumbos as usual, and tons more. I want to say thank you to everybody who supported us on Kickstarter. It was more successful than we ever could have anticipated. Don't forget to check out the emails we've been sending out to find your surveys in your inbox so that we can give you the stuff that you paid for. Most of, Mostly everyone has already done so, but there's a few people out there and I just wanna make sure that we can use every avenue we can to make sure that you know that you gotta tell us what you want just in case. Also wanna thank my patrons over on Patreon. You guys have been helping me so much. And that leads right into the longwar.net as usual. We're going to a two week model. Veterans over at the longwar.net are gonna get two weeks early access to all these videos. So everyone who's you know on YouTube, watching them for free, which is fine. Watch them for free all day, that's what we make them. As we've said a million times before though, we don't do it for money, it does take money to do this. So if you wanna see these videos two weeks earlier with no ads, go to longwar.net, try it a week free, Use your redemption codes, get discounts right now from our three major sponsors. Literally, it pays for itself. You buy one you know, set of paints this month, it's already paid for itself. So don't hesitate to check all that out. Anyway, don't wanna talk your guys' ears off too bad today. Let's jump right into it. Let's do this thing. Part one of painting the Nurgle Plank Hulk. This is one of the first models I ever painted as a professional. So I'm really excited to come back and paint another one. I primed in black, and I'm gonna start off Vallejo Air Dark Green. Really simple process. I'm just gonna crush that the skin out with just this dark green. It's a really solid base coat. Really nice dark green, not too dark, not too intense. It's a good drab green, which is pretty much what most realistic Nurgle schemes should have. And obviously I'm no stranger to going hyper green on my Nurgle but my client expressed an interest in the super realistic, dingy, beat up green here. He's a big model with a lot of surface area, so you just gotta be patient, you gotta get the angles right, you gotta come in. Solid base coat right there. I mean, he, you can see that there's a lot of coverage with that Vallejo Air color. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna be a gangster gumbo. We're gonna be combining two Privateer Press colors and one Vallejo Air. That's Trader Green, Menoth, Highlight, uh, Whites, and uh, we're going to be using some yellow, uh, moon yellow. Mix them all together. Airbrush flow improver. We're going mainly green with a little yellow in it to make it yellowy green. And using the white highlight, the men off white, to give it that uh, brighter color without just using white. Because white has a tendency to shit on colors and make them look too pastel. Mainly, we're just doing this to become our pre-shade to our wash. Don't have to overthink this process. And you can see he's like coming out you know a little bit more interesting you know it is getting a little pastel but you'll see you just got to bear with me you'll see the process while all this stuff dries it's time to be efficient this is where becoming a professional painter uh matters we're going to pull out the typhus corrosion one of my favorite colors of all time literally ancient chinese trick and we're going to just slather this on his legs we're going to fucking annihilate him this is nurgle all day every day so just go on, crush it out, get it on there, put it in front of a fan when you're done, let it all just dry up. This is, and this goes on so easy, like it's, it literally has a lot of coverage. I mean, like it is, Typhus Courage has changed my life. GW, always an innovator. Like they, when they came out with inks, changed my life. When they came out with washes, changed my life again. Almost invalidated the previous five years, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, they're doing it yet again. I don't use a lot of their pigments and a lot of their uh, washes anymore, but I can't get away from their uh, technical effects. Just the best. So you can see it's already looking interesting. It's already looking dynamic, and we haven't even started yet. Now, literally, not even three minutes in, and he looks great. Now that you can see 
um, most of that time is crushes on. We're gonna jump over onto the gun, some of the details. And you can start pretty aggressive, and then depending on your comfort level, you can bring it down a notch with your paintbrush. You see I'm using an insanely large frayed out paintbrush. We're gonna paint everything. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable using this gangster brush, but I have been using this brush for a while and I am literally a professional. You might wanna knock it down a notch, go down a size just to get in close to his hands to not speckle that type of scrolls all over the place. And even if you do, just feather it out, use a little water, you can wick it away. It's, it's, it's just an easy paint to work with. Now we're gonna go into the Vallejo, or sorry, Army Painter, Strong Tone. I just got a sample of this from our Army Painter to utilize. So this is the first time I'm using it in a tutorial. Uh, I wanna thank those guys for letting me uh, use some of their paints and show them off here. So this Strong Tone ink, it's not the same as the dip that they have. But you can see it is amazing. Like we're gonna just literally completely cover all the green that we just did with the strong tone. I'm not watering it down, nothing. Going on thick, going on strong, starting kind of toward the top so it can pull down toward the bottom. Using the paintbrush to continue spreading it out. We don't want it to pull up in any of those uh, crevasses. We don't want it to, you know, undo our beautiful paint job so far. Just keep moving, stay fast, don't overthink it. But be liberal. Liberal as fuck. Look at this. It's already becoming interesting. He's got a lot of nook and crannies though. You want to make sure you flip them upside down, do everything you can. Get in there. And already it's starting to dry and it's already interesting. It's, I mean, it's almost painting itself at this point. Now we're going to come in and use another army painter. These guys were great. Let me use some of their basic sets. We're going to use their plate mail metal. Comes in their base color match set. That it Actually, all these paints match their spray paints. We're gonna dry brush all this type of corrosion. We're letting that strong tone get a nice solid dry in. And while it's it's pretty much almost all the way dry now, we're going to still give it a little bit more time. Uh, we're gonna minimize our contact with the model. I'm gonna try to hold the legs as much as possible. Uh, if I do touch the skin of the model, I'm gonna be, you know, very, very delicate. And we're gonna sort of dry brush this type of corrosion. Get our biggest brush. We're not even gonna focus on too much detail here. We're not even gonna worry about making it too dry. This is Nurgle, it can be a little streaky since we're gonna do a lot of technical effects too. Which obviously, uh, technical effects are gonna be part two of this video. Part one is just getting it done, getting all these details in, doing all these basic techniques. Solid dry brush, you've seen me do it a hundred times. Literally go against the grain, with the grain, all directions, just go. Let that brush get, get on there. Like you want all the little sharp edges to catch the paint as you're rapidly moving back and forth. Standard dry brush technique, if you have any questions on dry brush, literally private message me. I will send you a message in detail, but I have shown you guys in the past. Just check through the uh, the model library. And you can see I'm really focusing on not touching the green with my hands. I just don't want to fuck it up with the oil on my skin. Going back to Trader Green, one of the best colors. Grabbing the dark green again too though. We don't want to go too extreme with our first initial highlight. So we're mixing dark green and Trader Green together. Making it kind of a 50-50 blend make it a subtle and we're gonna slow this is a very detailed dry brush you don't want to go gangster like you just did on the metal you want to be slow you want to be methodical and you want to build up that dry brush you want to make sure that paintbrush is super dry you want you want to see dust coming off of this brush and you just want to take your time and you want to build it up the patience in this dry brushing step will really pay off multiple dry brushes multiple passes just build it up nice and slow it will really save you a lot of time in the long run, even though it seems like it's going to take a while here. I promise you, this is the most efficient way, but there's also the best way to utilize it uh, in conjunction with airbrush and washes. And you can see, already looking a lot more interesting, getting a little bit more aggressive as I um, get more familiar with the uh, level of paint that's on my paintbrush. But also, it's just kind of something that dry brushing does. You kind of get more and more comfortable as you go with it, as you learn this model's bumps, you know? Going back to Manoth White Highlight, this is another great color from Privateer Press I've been using. And we're gonna now go almost pure Manoth White Highlight, super detailed dry brush again. Back to super slow, super methodical. And we're gonna kind of focus on just areas. We're not gonna completely cover the model with this. We're trying to get the little edges on those uh, poxes that are bursting open, on his guts that are exploding into intestines, on his face. We're, we're just choosing where we want this super highlight to go. 
And I like Men Off White uh, Highlight because it's more like a bone. It's a creamy champagne white. It's a lot better than actually using white. I pretty much would avoid using pure white on any Nurgle models. Always use a bone white in substitution. You can see it's really just doing a lot of work on those spider webby uh, broken skin areas and those patches. It's really just popping the model. Come back, hit it from a different angle. You know, it's easy to get fixated on going one way with the dry brush, like up and down, but you also want to go side to side, diagonally, up and down. You just got to move the model around and get in there. Be methodical, pay attention. This literally will pay off and you'll see soon. He's already looking magnificent. And yet again, now I'm going on doing my second pass, going a little bit thicker, picking the areas I want to have more highlight. You can do two passes, three passes, you can go as many passes as you want. I'm doing one light pass on the areas, followed by a second light pass. But since I um, did grow confident during the first path, like I learned like the intricacies of the model, I was I'm going in a little bit less dry on how much paint's on my brush. It's a little wet, you know, like but you can kind of you can kind of feel a model out as you go. We're gonna go in with another Minotaur paint. You don't see me using these a lot. We're gonna use Demonic Skin. I have so many of these paints laying around that I'm just like, you know what? I gotta start using them up. They're not my favorite, but here we go. I'm gonna use it to just establish a base uh, color, kind of a base coat on the guts. Rather than go in there and paintbrush all that detail in, which I will do, I'm gonna start off with airbrushing the base coat. We're gonna go in with Scarlet Red of Vallejo Air Color, one of my favorite reds in the game. And we're gonna like kind of just start playing with how I want the red to interact with the purple there. At this stage, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with it, but I always like to make these colors interact. I like to make that red create like that irritation, that sore infection, you know? And sometimes I just don't have a clear path in mind where I'm gonna go. And I just kind of go freeform, I kind of go artistic. And now I'm just feeling it out, deciding I want this red to go in every little area that you see big open sores to indicate in infection or irritation. It really, you know, it really just shows you how effective an airbrush is as a tool. Instead of pulling out your paintbrush and filling these little cavities up with paint, this is giving me a nice little subtle, thin layer over the green. And the good thing is red interacts with green very well. It sticks to it. You can see we're getting a nice inflamed look here. Super gross. We're gonna be moving on, um, cleaning out our airbrush, taking this time to be efficient. You know, like I said, put it down, Anytime the model's drying, you could be doing something else. But also, we can just admire how beautiful this bastard is looking. We're going to be moving on using another um, favorite of mine, old school technique. This is uh, not a Vallejo air color, but it's still one of my favorites. It's the magenta. And I'm kind of deciding that I don't quite like what I've done with the guts there. And I'm going back in with the magenta and I'm establishing more of a pink. And now I'm going to just put it in anywhere I think that it'll highlight or offset that red. Because I just like, I really like the purple pink uh, complement to my Nurgles. Whether I'm doing the hyper greens or the realistic greens, it's just something I've been doing for a long time and I believe in it. I love the way it looks. Now, it is time to pull out white. Pulling out the Vallejo Air White and we're going to mix it in a little bit with the colors that we've been using. And we're going to now blend out those guts. We're going to put it in with that magenta, create a nice pink. You're going to want to really water this down so it doesn't speckle all over the place and you want to maintain control so you don't get the speckles all over the beautiful green that we just established. And it is coming out nice. It's You're getting a nice transition coming in, uh, really building up a nice detail. Um, and now we're gonna do the tongue. Like before you go and airbrush the tongue though, you're probably gonna wanna paint it. And I'm, I did. you can see there, I made a mistake and I'm in there too watery, so I'm using a paper towel to kind of uh, soak up some of the water. Sometimes players fuck up, you know, And but there's ways around it. But I am trying to do a wet blend, so now I'm blending the red back into the pink white that we had. I used what was left over in the airbrush pot, and I'm blending it together. And you can see a nice wet blend doesn't take very long to establish, especially uh, since I'm just going to use it as a baseline for a glaze or a wash. This does take a little bit of practice, though. If you don't feel comfortable with this, practice it on a couple of the models. But uh, you can see that the key to a wet blend is keeping the paint wet going back and forth having your paints out on the palette and we're just using a little bit of pink and white from the Vallejo um, magenta mixed in with a little Vallejo or white 
and we're just going back and forth with that in Scarlet Red. And now we're just highlighting it up, making it look beautiful, making that disgusting tongue look amazing, giving that clean dirty. And there it is. It doesn't look too bad. So now what we're doing is we're going through in all those little skin breaks and we're painting them red. Using a little bit of white, a little bit of red, making them kind of pink. You don't have to really focus on these because we are going to go back in with a technical color and fill those in. I just like there to be a solid base. Now we're going to start picking out all the, all the pustules. Like you don't want to slag on this. This is easy. This is just an old, this is one of the best oranges in the game, or actually browns. This is Reaper Orange Brown and Reaper Harvest Brown. These colors are unprecedented. Like you need to get these in your game. This is Reaper Master Series. We're going to also incorporate some Flash Gets Yellow from GW, and we're going to start highlighting them now. Now that you've built them all up with that brown, we're going to go in, quickly throw a little bit of top layer on there with that yellow mixed in, and it gives you that disgusting, looks like it's about to pop look. It is just, I just love these models. Like, I get mesmerized by the Plague Hulk. So much detail in this model. Like, this is just an epic model. You can tell that whoever sculpted this model was a true fan of Nurgle. There is nothing in this model that does not speak of Nurgle. Same deal, you can use all those same colors on his horn. Uh, you definitely want to pay attention to every detail. The more details you pay attention to on a model like this, the better it's going to look. We save so much time with the wash technique, the dry brush, and the airbrush that we're going to take that time that we save and put it back into doing things like finding all those little pustules, all those pox marks. Uh, painting the horns, painting everything, giving it a nice little wet blend like I showed you earlier. Using Menoth White, come in, highlight everything with Menoth White. Like Menoth White just keeps coming back. You know, it's just one of the best colors. Painting the ribs, I use it a little bit on that uh, that horn up top. It's just I can't even like, like Privateer Press makes some of the best paints. It's also one of the best deals. You get so many more ounces of paint for your dollar in there. And the pigments are so strong, it just works so well for everything. Now we're going back to Vallejo, we're gonna use their flesh wash. And this is possibly becoming my favorite wash, this and their sepia. And we're gonna wash all those guts we just did. Nice light wash, but be methodical and get it all in there. Cause I decided I want all those maggots to have a little border in there. He's got a lot of, in case you didn't realize, maggots are spilling out of his intestines. And what better way to bring, uh, you know, attention to those maggots than with a sick wash. So go on and wash that. Wash anything you think you need to. I'm going to wash basically the guts, some of those open wounds, the tongue, everything. And this flesh wash is just so good. I mean, look at those guts already down there. Like, it dried so fast. It looks so real. Go in, hit everything. I mean, I'm talking don't leave stones unturned you know go and paint all those little pox marks go i mean just anything that can help you know like it's there's so much work to do on this model that you don't want to slack you don't want to say you know what it's fine we're going to go in and paint every single one of these little pimples we're going to just focus mainly on ringing it so that there's a nice clear border around it creating a degree of contrast between the pimple and the green skin it also helps blend the yellow orange and the brown together that's basically what washes are for, but um, washes, if you use them clever, uh, more cl in a more clever way, you can create more contrast too. Not just, you know, increasing your blend capabilities. Same deal over here, like look at how much more realistic all those pox marks just got. I mean, they look, they're starting to look real. Not like a model that was painted to look disgusting. It looks disgusting. Let's pull out the, uh, army painter metal again and just start hitting those details you know like you see a little pipe sticking out hit it hit it with that metal he's got tons of details that are just everywhere that are just you know as you paint them you realize like yo i didn't even notice he had these pipes back here just be methodical take your time as i've said a million times before this is one of those models you just can't play games with if you want this model to look amazing you can and you can see we really haven't done anything that takes a whole lot of skill just yet all we're doing is techniques we're doing simple techniques, but we're doing the right techniques in the right order. And that's kind of the next level process. It's the marriage of quantity and quality. You, the expert delivery of technique. There's obviously a skill in knowing your techniques, and that's why we make these videos. So obviously these pipes have pimples and postules on them too. And you can see, 
I didn't paint every posture. You don't have to. You don't have to paint every single one of those huge blisters. Just paint most of them. You know, there can be different variations of disgustingness, you know. These ones haven't broken through the surface yet. These ones have. I'm painting most of them, but I'm not. But like I said, I'm not going to paint every single one. I'm, you know, just focus on it. Do due diligence. Do not slack. Like slacking on a model like this is a sin. <laughs> a sin in the eyes of our godfather, Nurgle. Even, there's even pimples growing on the metal. You know, I mean, like, this is total disgusting plague hulk. I mean, just Nurgle infects even machine. I love it. Like, Nurgle has some of the most interesting fluff and models in the game. We're going to pull back out our violet. I've been loving this color lately. This is a Vallejo uh, game color. And we're going to paint this drool. Like, he's got, like, a shower of disgusting spit and drool coming out of the side of his mouth and this purple violet really is the perfect contrast and complement to everything i've been falling in love with this color i've been using it a lot more lately and you'll see here it is just perfect for this and take a second to notice like look at those uh open wounds and look at those pox marks like how good is this plague hulk looking and like i said we haven't really done anything that crazy. All we're doing is paying attention, using techniques, being methodical, and not being lazy. This is how you bring hobby back. This is hobby effort. That's all we can ever do is put in our effort. Doesn't matter how good you are. And like I said, that's why I make these videos. So look at him at this stage. He's looking amazing, but he can look a little bit more amazing. We're gonna pull out that uh, game color pink, and we're gonna start doing some wet blends again like I taught you guys come in establish the highlight on all that violet have your violet out next to you in a little bit of water and come in and just quickly wet blend this pink in go back and forth you know just kind of have to work it these are this this is a skill so obviously there are some things that require skill wet blending is one of them but i'm confident you guys can see how easy it is in this video it's mainly about being subtle and building up utilizing all the colors you have you know, taking the time to lay them all out. As we move on, you can see that that shower of drool is really setting off his face. I love it. Can't say enough good things about Violet. Such a good color. Now that all that metal is dried while we were doing that wet blend, we're gonna go in and use our strong tone and we're gonna wash all that metal. You can see we're being medium level detailed here because this strong tone is fine to get on the green around it just, you know, try to get most of it in the metal. <laughs> but you can slack a little bit here. This is where I love wash technique. really helps out big time. Obviously, I skipped a few steps. You can see I painted all those maggots. I did use uh, Men Off White Highlight. Painted all those maggots up. And then went back with the Strong Tone and highlighted and washed them. Very simple. Didn't even focus on any blending. Just very cleanly painted them. Every, found every maggot on his body. Painted them all. I didn't want to bore you guys with five minutes of painting maggots pull out the game color pink again get it in your airbrush use a little water use a little flow improver and start highlighting some of these pink areas like that huge marker nurgle that's bust bursting through his skin there look at how much more interesting it just got when we blended some of that pink into there do it to his tongue do it to his guts everything this is where the airbrush like i said utilize as a tool don't Use it to base color your models and then throw it in the box and forget about it for the rest of your project. You can find a reason to use it the whole time you're painting. We're gonna use it on his tongue, make his tongue just have so much more interesting highlight there, so much more transition. Now, obviously, ancient, next level painting trick, burnt umber. Burnt umber is the truth. Get it in there and go in there and decide what areas of the skin you want to have more contrast in. Find the shadows and make them darker. That is the simplest way to explain what I'm doing right now. And since I have thinned it out pretty well, it's almost like a tint. Throw a little water in there, a couple drops of flow improver, really break it up. And like I said, I'll repeat that. Find the dark areas and make them darker. It really is like, if you use Photoshop, it's like, it's like, you know, playing with the contrast and the brightness settings. That's basically what we're doing here. Well, anyway, guys, that's it for part one. Part two of the Nurgle Plague Hulk is going to be the technical phase. 
We're going to finish off his legs and we're going to use all these technical effects to do it. Thanks for watching. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.